if you're watching this, then you must have the uh, the QR scanning code app on your smartphone, and you've scanned the little square box in the back of the uh, booklet with I Am Anonymous, the debut album from us. Um, I'm here on my own because I'm out in Los Angeles. The rest of the guys are back in England working on some other things. Um, this is really just going to talk through each each piece on the album and let you know a few things about what we think about when we wrote it and some of the instrumentation and the, the equipment that we used. Um, you could also be watching this on YouTube several weeks after those who have uh, got the QR scanner thing app on the phone, um, in which case, welcome. If you did scan it and look at it, then you would have seen this two weeks before the other people that are watching it now. Okay, so track one, Stored Armageddon. Um, starts with my 1973 Fender Rhodes Mark I piano. It's got a um, little bit of distortion on it and the rest of the band, I just thought it would be a really nice idea for the rest of the band kind of faded in. Gives a nice kind of intro into the album, this kind of sort of dark bed of sort of unknowing what's going on and then the band kind of, you know, fade in. Uh, which I think sounds pretty cool. The piano I used on this, and in fact most of the album, was the Nord piano, which uh, I still think has got the most realistic piano sound of all the keyboards um, I've tried, and especially the upright piano, more about that later, but uh, in this track it's, the, uh, it's one of the grand pianos uh, with a slight change to the EQ. Mm. About six minutes in, um, I really like the rolling kind of roads, Fender Rhodes part that kind of goes round um, in bars of like two bars of five and a bar of six, two bars of five and a bar of seven, I think. Um, and I really like the way that that you can build a structure um, from odd time signatures and something, a pattern that seems um, to just kind of evolve and not feel kind of uncertain or unsteady. And um, Rich is kind of keeping a straight groove pretty much all the way through that, which um, which kind of ties it all together. There's a lot of that on this album where I'm playing in one type of signature, Pete and Lee are playing in another, and uh, who knows where Rich is doing something completely different. So that's still Armageddon um, uh, from a keyboard perspective. Keep us for the moment. Hey, this is Pete from Headspace. Uh, I play guitar uh, in the band and um, just wanted to take you through some of the ideas uh, for writing I Am Anonymous. Um, so the first track on the album um, is called Stalled Armageddon and uh, one of the ideas about writing the concept of this album as it was evolving um, was to kind of bookend the album with, uh, you know, sort of a, 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 a you know, a, a overture, if you like, at the start and then uh, an ending kind of uh, track, which is, uh, which is the big day. And that was something as kind of developing um, all the tracks for it, we, we kind of kept in mind. Um, so with this track, um, certain themes that appear throughout the album uh, later on with other tracks are kind of introduced and hinted at, albeit in different, um, in different ways and different uh, harmonic uh, perspectives and that sort of thing, or different rhythms. Um, so the very f start of the track um, is kind of a really oblique, stark uh, start, um, kind of, uh, with a tank rolling in from one side, uh, which uh, Adam brought up in his video, which was something that we wanted to start with the kind of uh, a lot of the kind of war themes that are brought up uh, lyrically. Um, and there's a, a, a dirty Rhodes uh, that's playing um, a little uh, line in, uh, in B. But uh, along with that, in unison is um, uh, a fretless eight-string guitar um, that uh, I built, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a weird kind of vibe. I kind of build it towards the end of um, of writing this album, and um, it was just uh, really a bit of a tip of the hat to um, Ron Thal, Bumblefoot, um, hearing some of the fretless stuff that he'd done. Um, yeah, I've been really inspired by that. It's a really different sound, makes you play differently, and um, yeah, I kind of uh, I've been using eight strings for quite a while, and. Uh, decided to make a fretless one and uh, yeah it's very cool it's got an ebony fingerboard um, and uh, and it's got a the body is um, a Karina body which is quite lightweight um, yeah and for the very start I kind of 
you know, it's an unusual instrument, and I thought it would be something cool to sort of get on the track uh, straight away. So uh, that's uh, it's in a kind of a Hungarian minor scale thing, which I quite enjoy, as opposed to kind of natural minor and stuff. Um, which uh, it's got a, dr a droning B string. The tuning on the guitar is uh, it's uh, what I use on all my eight strings, which is um, uh, it's got a, it's got two lower strings basically. So it's like a seven string guitar, which is uh, in standard with a low B string. And then one string below that, rather than being an F sharp, I use a really long scale length with these guitars. I use a 30 inch scale. Um, just because when I first started designing these and, and came up with the idea for them, um, I went with 30 inch scale as the option just to give the, the top string or the lowest string um, enough tension. Uh, I use an 80 bass string or a 0.8 of an inch bass string as my low E string, so I basically tune it down uh, to, a, to a low E. Um, and yeah, that's the tune I get for that. So it starts off in a kind of Hungarian minor scale, uh, which is kind of really stark and slow. And then underneath that sort of ramping up comes a, a kind of heavy marching riff, um, which has got some chord stabs that are sort of uh, based on an Indian scale called Pantu Virali, for those who are interested. Um, which. Uh, is then also kind of in contrast playing a, 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 an E um, kind of bass note uh, that's chugging away using again an Indian kind of technique um, of kind of adding and subtracting notes from a phrase um, kind of like a, a core vi they call it or a T vi and uh, I quite like that because it's basically adding um, each of the stabs each time or each of the chugs are kind of playing uh, one beat then two well, it's in 16th note grouping so one then two 16th notes three sixteenth notes, then four sixteenth notes, then three, then two, then one, and then starts again. So it sort of keeps ramping up and down like that. And then each time kind of adding these uh, dissonant stabs from uh, the Pantu Virali scale against it. Um, and against the juxtaposition of the E, e minor sort of vibe versus the, the B minor that it started with, and they're kind of clashing together. Uh, they're a fourth apart and kind of sound uh, nice and dissonant. And it's kind of suggesting that something is not quite right. And uh, that's sort of, thematically something lyrically that um, starts being picked up. So it's kind of suggesting that um, something is about to happen, uh, which obviously is. Um, uh, so the next thing that sort of comes in once all that craziness, there's a kind of um, a run that kind of then uh, puts us into this kind of heavy riff, um, which, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of kind of heavy guitar riffs and, and that sort of thing. It's something I've always enjoyed, and um, there's plenty, <laughs> plenty of it on this album. Um, yeah, that kind of brings it all together and starts the progression of the album together, whereas the two parts at the start are kind of working against each other. Um, the fretless appears again um, with the guitar melody at 2 minutes 52, um, which is suggesting the theme from uh, the third track on the album called Soldier, which is a really great uh, melody that uh, Damien came up with vocally. And um, yeah, that idea of an overture and suggesting melodies earlier, that was a really nice one that kind of soars and is nice and slow. Um, it's playing against a different harmonic context, but the melody's really strong. So, you know, adding that in was a nice thing, and putting it on the fretless with a with a dirty sound as opposed to the clean sound. It's just a really cool tone. Um, you know, it's got that strange bloom to it um, uh, when you play a fretless um, instrument. You know, it blooms very differently than a fretted instrument. So you kind of get a lot of um, unusual, unusual sounds, unusual tones, and then you know, extra game when you're playing lead lines, obviously to add a bit more sustain. Um, which can be a difficult thing with, with with fretless instruments, especially with the thinner strings of a of a, an electric uh, guitar as opposed to a bass. Um, but yeah, I really like that. That's quite a cool thing. And again, just um, I built that guitar towards the end of the album. It was definitely something that, did when doing overdubs and that kind of thing, it was <laughs> definitely a matter of can I use the fretless on this? And a lot of the time, it was yes. Um, so when the verse comes in, there's a clean um, clean guitar, fretted guitar now. Um, that's playing, uh, that's actually playing the theme from the second track, uh, Fall of America. It's very subtle and it's playing the changes underneath it. Um, you know, the vocal line is completely different, but it's just a very subtle hint um, and adds, again, does something like that later on, sort of suggesting, suggesting more stuff that's happening in the album. Um, then from then on, there's some backing vocals, which is kind of cool. Um, Ads talks about it in his video, but um, we happen to be uh, in LA at the same time, um, he was playing uh, with Ozzy and I was doing some shows with the band called One Eskimo 
and uh, he borrowed a microphone off uh, off their front of house guy, and uh, we did the backing vocals in his hotel room, which was uh, yeah, which was kind of cool. Probably not to the delight of a lot of the hotel guests, but um, we managed to to get get them all done uh, in a couple of days while we were there, which was uh, which was quite cool. Um, and that happens a lot on this uh, on this album in terms of uh, stuff recorded in different places and different rooms. The majority of this track was started um, uh, in 2008 I think and, uh, and, and most of it was done um, uh, in terms of the compositional side um, at Adam's studio um, in, uh, in Buckinghamshire at the time. Um, and yeah, it, it kind of moves through a lot of different elements that suggesting that this album so it's quite a nice one to sort of give an idea of where we're coming from. Um, I really like the contrasting sections between heavy and quiet dynamics. Um, that's something that appears a lot in the album, you know, leaving space when there's something happening uh, melody-wise from, from vocals, um, you know, leaving room for it. But then, you know, when it's time to, to really um, lift and, and create tension or, or a big groove and that kind of stuff, it's nice to really have those differences. And um, Jens Bogren, who mixed uh, the album, did a really great job of of understanding that. I mean, we didn't get to go there, unfortunately, to Fascination Street, which is something I really wanted to do, but uh, time just didn't allow for it. Um, and he really got it straight away and really, um, you know, uh, left that space so the quiet sections are quiet and the big sections are big. Uh, uh, towards the end, there's sort of some big chords open up after the guitar solo. Um, which uh, you know kind of gives that big lush kind of sound, um, where the, you can hear the top end with the with the, with the low end of the notes together. Um, I recorded the whole album on a Fractal Audio Axe FX Ultra. Um, I've since moved on to the Axe FX Two just because it's new technology and, and there's new stuff. But it's a really great unit, and um, it allowed me to record all of my and track all my guitars all, all over the world. So some of it um, in my in my studio at home, some of it. Uh, in various hotel rooms and stuff um, around America while I was working out there and uh, it allowed me to have the same guitar sound uh, everywhere I went which you know you don't get that obviously if you if you're marking up and stuff you need to go in and do all your tracks at the you know at the same time essentially otherwise you, you kind of run into those those sorts of issues of having different sounds when you're recording different sections so that was a real godsend and, and, a, and a really pre, uh, great piece of gear um, and I love how it sounds and uh, it's uh, I still use it, I use it live and I use it in the studio, they're, they're, they're really cool. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was stalled Armageddon in all its glory um, and we'll move on to Fall of America. <laughs>